In this video, I'm gonna break down this night scene I created for a professional competition. My friends at Omar Tetus and I got third place on it, and this video is part two. If you wanna look at the boards and learn more about the project, be sure to check out the first video. Links in the video description or here on the cards. This video will be divided into two parts, the rendering process and the post-production. Both are pretty much equally important, but if I didn't do any Photoshop work, I wouldn't really get to this final atmosphere and result. At least not in such a short time, which is important when we're talking about competition. I won't talk about why we chose this particular scene and the specific specifics of it that was covered in video number one. But I'll talk more about the technical aspect of the image, the rendering and the post-production. By the way, if you like architectural visualization and representation, be sure to subscribe to not miss any new videos. So the rendering engine I used on this competition was V-Ray. The project was modeled in ARCHICAD, but then I exported to SketchUp to use V-Ray. I know this is not that intelligent of a process, uh, not that fluid, but it's what I prefer doing to get the most out of every program. Rendering the image locally in ARCHICAD is just crap, to be honest. But then I could have used Lumion, for example, with the Live Sync plugin that for sure has a lot less friction. But Lumion can get pretty heavy, especially connected directly to ARCHICAD. And although my setup here is kind of somewhat powerful, it doesn't handle heavy workflows that well. And because competitions are always tough, on time especially, I couldn't risk not delivering the images. I was helping with the design, but I was also in charge of the images. So at the end of the day, it was my call on this and V-Ray it is. This process that you're about to see took a lot of hours and was done over several days, so I won't be able to cover everything. I'll skip the usual stuff, but I'll point out the three most important things that I feel will bring the most value to you. So first tip, and this helped us a lot, establish the main rendering file. This will get your attention in terms of material settings, lighting, assets and all, then every update along the way you copy and paste here to replace the elements. This allowed us to start working on the images even though the project wasn't finished yet. For example, the facade was only solved on the last few days and since the guys on the team worked really well on ARCHICAD at a really advanced level, the project was of course very neat and organized into layers, so they could export the updates in parts and in layers. For example, here as you can see, this file has only the back building, or the railing, and so on. So then I also kept SketchUp organized into groups and tags, and this process was really easy to do. It was just copy and paste in place. As long as you don't change the origin in ARCHICAD or even SketchUp, you're good to go. Now, tip number two is that I used everything that I could from the ready-to-use library that V-Ray has to offer. And this, of course, applies to Lumion, Enscape, Twinmotion, and all. But what really made the difference here is that there's a tool in V-Ray called Scatter. I added all of the objects to the scatter and applied over a surface. So vegetation was a breeze to add. If you've been following the channel for some time, you know that I've always said this, that I'm all about adding vegetation in Photoshop, at least until now. It, it was only because the 3D models and these tools weren't easily available. It was too much extra work to make it in 3D and oftentimes it didn't look that good. But now since rendering engines have evolved, I've changed my mind on this. Now the scatter tool is a total blast, but when you need more refined positioning, like, like here, I relied on the good old manual placement. And also bonus point here, I guess, is that the file didn't get too heavy because of the scatter tool and also because V-Ray uses proxies. Okay, then last tip on the rendering step is that I also did something I told you never to do. I added people in 3D. <laughs> I know, and I specifically said that here in this video. Well, I used 3D people, but only because I did something in Photoshop later, and I had to rely on this because we were really running out of time. So I guess if it comes down to time, go ahead and use as many 3D assets as you can, but also, as I said on that video, be mindful about it. Now, ideally, if I had more time, I would have done some things differently here, one of which is the people. But then I also added the cars using the library, which is called uh, Viri Cosmos. I think I haven't said that before. And if you weren't, for this new trick I learned in Photoshop, you would have looked odd. I applied this trick on the people and on the core. I think you, you can guess it by now, but I'll talk more about this in a second once we're in Photoshop. Now, post-production time. 
So here I'm gonna run by every layer, talk a bit about the process and give you some overall tips. Sounds good? By the way, if you wanna learn what is post-production in Photoshop and how to master the non-destructive workflow, which is what I used on this image and what allowed us to update the project without losing any Photoshop work, we've got a premium course here at Upstairs. I'll leave a link down in the video description if you're interested. So what you can see here is the base layer. This blue folder has everything that is related to the base. As you can see, there are many, many layers here in this folder. What we did was that we had a like a base render to start with. And then as we progressed with the project, we, we did more renders to replace a couple of the elements. For example, these lighting doors were updated mid process. And this was easily done if you maintain the scene and you used the these elements that I, that I usually place at the bottom of the layer stack, which are called the render elements. I also applied a mask to this group so that I could replace the sky. As you can see, the sky doesn't look like it belongs to the render, but it was the HDRI that I used to illuminate this scene. So using the alpha channel, I removed the sky with the mask and I started testing backgrounds. This is the final one, but as you can see, there are multiple options here. I usually like to just throw a couple of tries there and see how it looks, test the colors, test the, the clouds. Obviously this was more towards a night scene or maybe an early morning one. And even the sky that I ended up using, I, I tweaked it a bit. For example, these clouds were drawing too much attention. So I just painted over, added a bit of highlights, changed the, even the color. This was more towards the cyan, but I, I brought more towards blue. And this image as is would have been, been fine already, but then I started tweaking, for example, fixes. This was more to bring attention to the facade material because it was a type of cladding that we that has some nuances, some, some differences in terms of um, material, in terms of color and values. So using those render elements that I mentioned, these ones, I could easily select the individual claddings. Of course, this is not such a clean selection, but it, it didn't matter because it was very far away from the camera. So with the fix folder, I started adding variations and fixing some overall stuff that brought a bit more detail. So then I went on, I usually on the night scenes, I usually like to create a folder for lighting and that will enhance what's already there on the render engine. I know you could have done this right from the render engine, but as I said, sometimes it takes a lot more time to do this in the rendering process. And it's just a couple of clicks here in Photoshop. So this is the before and this is the after. It's just a couple of adjustment layers with using the mask here, and then you, you dab on the areas you wanna bring the highlights. Now, let me talk about the card. This wasn't hard at all, but as you can see, there are multiple layers that compose this this card that appears on the foreground. And what I used to make sure that I, I got the motion blur I wanted was that I rendered two, two versions of it, one with the car and one without the car. And then using the render elements, I cut it out and placed it here without any background. So if I isolate this car, As you can see, it's just like a simple car here, but the cool thing is that since this is a 3D model and was rendered in place, it has all the reflections and the lighting. So the values are all taken care of. What I needed to do, well, we could have brought the shadows as well, but I did it myself here in Photoshop. And then I added a couple of motion blurs, both to the car and to the shadow. And then I start building this effect that this, this tray of light that the, the car will leave. Yeah, it was just multiple layers so that I could start building this effect. If you try to do this on one layer, it won't look good. So after the car was done, the lighting and the fixes, it was time for some extra things that during the process, I felt the need of adding it. So as, as you saw with the little, with the nuances that I added, the brighter and darker colors to the facade material, I also felt the need to adding the uh, select outlines so that this was this was too much of a, a blurred material here. There wasn't much definition. So with the render elements that were exported, the, I found this this one with the lines. I think it's called Cryptomate. I just pretty much enabled every render element available and then this one came out. 
I added both a white outline and a black outline so that the lighter material got the black outlines and the darker material got the white outlines, as you can see. And personally, I thought this made the image a lot richer in terms of detail. But again, you obviously could have done this directly from the rendering engine, but it would have been too many tweaks, too many testings, and we didn't have much time for that. And with Photoshop, it's just a couple of clicks away, apply some masks and you're done. Next, we're talking about people. As I said, on this particular image, I used 3D people, but instead of just adding them and leaving them there, I used the same trick that I applied to the car to make them a little bit blurred. This is not perfect and I would have changed a lot more things as I said, but at least it took the static feel of them out of this image. For example, this woman here before and after. It's not much, it's not perfect, but I thought it was better. Okay, then you might say, well, the image is ready. Actually, uh, I couldn't really do this in 3D, although I kind of wanted, but this is something I'm very used to adding in Photoshop and I'm quite fast at it. So I just left to Photoshop. We This top flower bed here is gonna have some, some type of leaves, some type of uh, plants that will hang over the edge. So that was added in Photoshop and I made sure to match the same tonality that the existing vegetation here that came from the render had to this nearly added one. So as you can see, it has sort of a darker tint of a blue. The vegetation has the same tone. And even on the individual balcony flower pots here, I added a bit of little details. Again, it's the small details. So the image is, is actually ready by now, but we thought that it was missing kind of a, like a foreground element here so that it framed this image better. Just as we did it on the first image, I brought a tree here. This tree here doesn't necessarily exist on this place, but it kind of made sense because there are a lot of trees on this street. So we were in a doubt if we turned it off or turned it on, but at the end, we decided to keep it. So this was the finalized image. But as you know, if you've been following the channel for some time, I always like to apply a camera raw filter at the end so that I can tweak every color and detail at once. And I usually also apply something called a Topaz Lab plugin. This just gives more contrast and more details. So this is before the Topaz Labs and the camera raw filter. And this is after. It adds more color and it makes the lines crispier, if you will. <laughs> and here I did both finalized versions with and without the tree. And that's it, that's the final image. Here's the before post-production. It already looked pretty good, but was kind of dull. And then here after post-production, I just enhanced what was already there. Thanks a lot for watching. If you learned something new today, don't forget to leave this video a like and click here to go watch the first video and learn more about the boards and the project.